Hi y'all, my name's Ned, this is my dog Jai, and today we're gonna to be talking all about Power BI support processes. In particular, we're gonna be talking about how to better support your Power BI reports via email. So no, we're not talking about a fancy intake form, we're not talking about a Power App, we're talking about good old-fashioned email. So what are we talking about? Well, we're gonna be talking about how you can build a web URL that you can put behind a Power BI button that when clicked will open up your end user's mail provider with a pre-composed email that they can then add additional details to and hit send. What's the advantage of this? Well, it means that all the emails that you get are gonna be pretty uniform. And that makes managing support, especially over an email inbox, which is already pretty difficult, a lot easier. Now, why are we going to be covering three different methods of doing it? Well, depending on your security settings on your computer or in your organization or even in your Power BI tenant, a few methods might not work for you. So we're going to cover a few different ones and hopefully one of them does. Now, before we get into the video, if you like content like this and you're interested in Power BI, interested in business intelligence, interested in slightly more off the deep end technical stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel right now. We're on the road to our next goal of 5,000 subscribers, and I'd really appreciate having you along for the journey. Thanks for watching. So the tech that we're going to use to do this is nothing too complex. In fact, it's been around for a long time. If you've ever built a website using Dreamweaver, for example, I don't know if you guys remember that tool, that Adobe tool, uh, you've probably used this, but you're just simply going to use a mail to provide some emails, provide a subject, and then provide a body. Now, if you notice, I'm using the percent 20 here for spaces, and I have gone ahead and I've set this data category to a web URL. I then simply have a button over here that's set to a web URL and then set to that uh, or set to that same text. Alternatively, right, I can get rid of this and I can set it to that mail to link. Now for me on my personal computer with my given security settings, this mail to link does not work, especially in Edge. So let me show you how it doesn't work. And then let's talk about an alternative approach. So here we are in Power BI Web, and here I am clicking that button. And as you can see, nothing happens at all. So what is our alternative approach? Well, it's using a tech called deep links. And deep links are what, when you click a link, for example, cause Edge to prompt you saying, hey, blah, 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 website is trying to open up an application on your computer. We can use a deep link to open up Outlook and compose a mail. You can also use a deep link to open up Outlook to a specific message. But the challenge with this is that depending on the Outlook version that your organization uses, it might not work. So let's quickly build a deep link that can open Outlook and then is supposedly going to compose a new email to be sent off. So here we are back in Power BI. We're going to create a new measure. We're going to call it Outlook Deep link. We're going to set this equal to this web URL here. Now what's actually opening up Outlook is this MS Outlook and then these two backslashes and then this compose right here is where I'm trying to kind of pass parameters to the application when it opens up. Now I have the new like re-engineered web Outlook on this so if I exit out of this right here and then I set this web URL right here to that Outlook deep link, right? And when I click it, it doesn't do anything, which is really frustrating, especially because when I put that web URL actually into my web browser, it actually loads, like take a look. So like, here's the web browser, here's that deep link. If I hit enter, it actually tries to open up Outlook. And when I hit open, it opens up Outlook. Unfortunately though, it doesn't actually open up to the compose screen. So it's not really working even though it wasn't working in Power BI to begin with. So what is the solution? Well, don't worry, I wouldn't leave you hanging. And I told you that I have three possible solutions depending on your setup. And the first one for me, or the third one for me, works wonderfully. So let's take a look at what that is. 
So here we are in the web browser of Power BI. I'm going to click or the web editor of Power BI. I'm going to click that button. I'm going to go action, right? And then I'm going to hit this FX button and I'm going to set it to the Outlook web link. Now, when this link is clicked, what it does is it opens up a link to outlook.com directly to the compose. Now this is still using a deep link, but it's using a deep link to outlook.office.com and then defining the definition right there. So what does that web URL format look like? Well, let's take a look. So it opens up with that HTTPS uh, outlook.office.com backslash mail, backslash deep link, backslash compose, and then you define your recipients with a two equals, and then the email, and then an and, and then the subject with the subject line, and then an and, and then the body, and then the actual body. And the percent 20 is the space, right? And that's just standard web URLs. So have you used this method in your own Power BI reports? If you have, which URL building method worked for you? Did you see any mistakes in my video as to why some of these weren't working for me? Because, you know, I do make mistakes in quite a few of these. Um, and if you're interested in more cool business intelligence content, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.